Alex Bohm was born in Miami, Florida. His family has been in Pinecrest since the 1600s. Everything started out well enough for Alex, surrounded by those who loved him, but he didn't quite understand why everyone always seemed to be wearing pointy hats. Alex comes from a family of twins. In an early show of one-upsmanship, he tried to pass as a triplet. He had a typical Pinecrest childhood. Every day before school, he would pick berries. He'd catch fish for his lunch. He'd then milk the family cows and feed his pet giraffe. There was time spent on the family yacht. As was the custom, Alex wore winter clothing unless it was less than 90 degrees. And each spring, he was required to wear butterfly wings for months at a time to show solidarity with the tropical environment. Family was always important to Alex. There were, of course, gatherings where the relatives were paid hefty sums to pretend that Alex was a charming and delightful child. His parents would often send him as far away as possible, preferably three time zones, to visit his relations, only to have him find his way back far too quickly. Being around Alex could be a challenge. It sometimes caused spontaneous outbreaks of facial hair. Alex loved his sister, but he spent much of his youth trying to escape from the clutches of her abuse. Often his evasive techniques were unsuccessful. Alex was a brilliant child. At 10 months, he won the Nobel Prize in Biology, proving that a writing instrument had nutritional value as a snack food. Bohm also mastered some of the most complex scientific instruments and set a fashion trend with the now famous soapy hat. But things were not always rosy. In 2001, rumors arose that Alex was the love child of his mother and General David Petraeus. Humiliated, Alex chose to live underwater for a period of six straight months. The Great T-Shirt Famine of 2009 followed. Alex supported many successful pro sports teams early on. But he began making some questionable choices. Whereas teams were once sources of pride, his new allegiances led to shame and disgrace. He also became obsessed with a college team from, of all places, New Jersey. People questioned whether it was a coincidence that the Rutgers football team scheduled a rare Saturday off on the date that Alex is having his bar mitzvah. Alex couldn't decide what to do with his life. He considered a career as a superhero, but that wouldn't fly. He tried his hand at being a news anchor, but he found living in a rectangular box too confining. In any event, he was eventually replaced by a hand puppet. Sadly, his art career faltered after critics harped that his works were too redundant. His musical career was short-lived. In despair, he joined the circus as a professional chair diver, but there were few fans. Alex then entered a period of deep self-examination, trying to figure out who he really was, including immersion into long-dead religions. He would finally find his outlet in sports. However, youthful mishaps fueled speculation that Alex lacked the coordination needed for competitive sports. But he raced on to meet his future. He tried soccer and found it was a way of forming close bonds with new people. But to thrill-seeking Alex, soccer didn't seem to offer enough violent contact. So he moved on to football, where he decided that helmets are for wimps. But baseball would prove to be Alex's passion and his undoing. After a career in travel ball and on his school team, some said it was a step down when Alex went straight from the U-13s to the Florida Marlins. But as fan adulation grew, his head began to swell. He hung around with other egomaniacs. He demanded that his relatives carry him from place to place. He considered a run for office, shocking his parents with his political leanings. 
there were rumors of a bingo addiction and a drinking problem. Late nights were spent with the guys and others. The late nights took their toll. An intervention by Alex's cousins failed miserably. There were shocking reports of gang activity. And bizarre behavior began to be seen on the field. But after Alex hit four home runs in a single at bat, everyone knew something was wrong. That's when the steroids scandal hit. Bohm immediately went into hiding. He considered various means of leaving the country, some more practical than others. But he was caught and sent to prison with his accomplice. Visiting days were a highlight. Vowing not to be caged, in a daring move in shark-infested waters, Alex and his accomplice escaped. And after a close call, they finally made it to dry land and were reunited with their family. The Bohms then became fugitives on the run. Seeking to evade the authorities, they sought refuge in high and low places. Using camouflage and other techniques, the Bohms tried to blend in subtly with the local scenes, sometimes more successfully than others. They managed to do some sightseeing while on the run, seemingly daring the police and Interpol to catch them. Alex was spotted in London and was rumored to be having an affair with the Queen. But Alex's patriotism and England's high taxes made him homesick and he broke it off. He decided to return home and face the consequences. He was reunited with his friends and they were happy to have him back. But there was still a steroid scandal to answer to. In the end, Alex decided to plead guilty, but the sentence was harsh. He was required for the next 10 years to go with his dad to every historic battlefield in the world. That was enough to make him never make the same mistake again. <laughs>